as we get older, uh, we have a tendency to perhaps take it a little bit easier with our exercise and, and the events we sign up for. I know I'm that way. I focus much more on endurance events that don't require really hard, short efforts. There's a lot of people that are my age that are athletes in this area, and they do it different. They do a lot of intervals. They do a lot of hard efforts, and the coaches are telling them to do it. So I decided it was something to look into, and I did some research, came across a really well-respected study done by the Mayo Clinic, and it points out that these hard efforts, these intervals, or they'll call them hit sessions, high-intensity interval training sessions, are really important to the cells of our body and to keep them from aging. So in this video, I'm going to do three things. One, I'm going to tell you a bit about that study, which was enlightening to me. Two, I'm going to actually put it to the test because this study says do hard efforts, do intervals. That is not easy. Uh, and then I'm going to really put it to the test. And I signed up for the first bike race I've signed up for in 20 years. It's one that car requires a really hard effort. Uh, it's short, different, and should be interesting. So you want to see that. So that's why I'm out here. Uh, I signed up for a cyclocross race. This isn't the exact right bike for it, but I'm going to make it happen. Uh, it's different than I've ever done before, so there's some skills I need to learn and train. That's why uh, I picked this spot. And the whole experience is something that is going to be a learning experience for me. I think for you too. Stay tuned to the end. You'll see the race. You'll see a little bit about what putting hard efforts are like. And maybe it's something that you want to incorporate into your own workouts. The purpose of the Mayo Clinic study was really to determine what types of exercise could have the most positive effect on age-related disease and disability. And so what they did in this study was they took 72 participants half of which were in a younger age group, half of which were in an older age group, and they subjected them to different types of exercise. So they took each of those age groups and split them into four. They had one group do HIT, high intensity interval training. We'll talk about that in a minute. They had another group do strength training. They had a third group do both HIT and strength training. And then the fourth group remained sedentary. And what they were looking at in the body is the mitochondria. And the mitochondria are structures within our cells that are responsible for a lot of the age-related um, things we see happening to our body. When they're not working well, they leak, and what that means is they emit free radicals into our body and they basically destroy some of those cells, and that's what we see when we age. The results of the study were pretty amazing. So the, the group that had the biggest improvement in their mitochondria was the HIT group, high intensity interval training. 69% improvement in the older adults in the mitochondria, and it was just over a 12 week period. The younger adults even saw improvement at almost 50%. So makes sense, older adults that have been sedentary for longer had more room for improvement, but it had an impact on any sedentary adult, young and old. So. We need HIT. We need high intensity interval training. What is HIT? Well, for the purposes of this study, it was very high intensity. They subjected these participants to 90 to 95% of their max heart rate. And if you're not sure how hard that is, I will say it's hard, believe me, but I'm gonna show you how hard it is because I put it to the test. I did a run, I did some work on a, on a trainer. I'm going to show you that and how I felt doing it. I also wanted to test this in the real world. And I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I've done some bicycle racing. I haven't done that in quite a while. Uh, mostly been focusing on endurance type events, but I wanted to try a high intensity bicycle race. So I entered a hit type bicycle race, cyclocross, which is short and quick. And I wanted to see how my endurance training in, uh, performed in a environment that required high intensity. Let's look at what high intensity interval training is 
and let's look at a high intensity event. So if you can run, running for me is a great way to get the heart rate up. In fact, I have a really hard time keeping that heart rate down when I run. So that's mainly been my focus is keeping that heart rate down. But today, I'm gonna go find a good steep hill that's part of my run and do a few intervals on that and get my heart rate up. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm coming up on the hill here. I'm already at about 132 and I know how to get to 150. It's not long enough hill to give me, a, say four minutes, but it'll get me up there. Better stop talking. It only says 135, 142, 146. Almost at the top of the hill. 148, 150. Okay, head back down. That's torture, probably for anybody, but I'm not usually exercising at that level, so this is new for me. 128, come on. I think I'd be rather walking the dog right now. 149, oh, went farther. I went to 152. Oh. Okay, here we go again. Quick start. 147. 150. Oh, I can confirm that 90% of your max heart rate, you can't talk and it hurts. Here it goes. Coming back up. I can feel it. Right now, this is hard. Oh, it says 156. Okay, I'm, I'm going to believe that. Back off a little. Okay, that said 156 for half the way, and I believe it. I think those earlier ones may have been a little off. So there's a lot to say about just go until it feels really hard, until you can't talk. That's a good measure. I'll try to get to about 130 like it was when I was running and then go for the interval. Okay, I feel like this is about the right effort for an interval. And my inner, my heart rate's down at 135. But I can't do this too much longer than four minutes. Okay, I've already done one interval. I'm gonna do another one. And this time I'm gonna do totally on perceived effort to the point where I think I can make it through four minutes, but not much further. And we're gonna see what that heart rate is. One minute feels hard. Two minute feels harder, but I think I can make it. Yeah, it's three minutes, I'm gonna make it. But it's really hard. I haven't looked at my heart rate yet. I'm gonna look at it now. 141. Okay, I'm gonna go down, just spin. My max heart rate, 143. That's all I can do. 143 is not 95% my max heart rate, it's not even 90. So I'm saying go off a perceived effort, do what you can do for four minutes, do it four times, if you like, probably a good number. Don't do it three times a week. That's too much. They did that for the study. Not necessary for your mitochondria cells, in my opinion. It's just gonna be too much. I think you do something like this once a week. Now we're gonna put this to the real test. Go out and do a real race. When I'm done with that race, I'll tell you how I feel. Clipped In For Life is putting on this great cyclocross race and they got music going and energy's high. So I've got my number, I've signed up and I'm getting my bike ready. Um, I came out here last night and helped kind of set up the course. Did very little help, but I got to pre-ride it then. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, so we'll see how this thing goes. Um, generally, these races, I've not done them before, really put you at, uh, at your limit because you're, it's only 30 minutes and you wanna to try to get in front if you're trying to be competitive. Okay, I'm gonna head out there. Let's do it. First lap was hard, and I just followed my age group until they got tired, and then I went ahead 
And then right at the end, I, last lap, I found a guy like half my age, maybe a teenager. So I just followed him until the end and left. He took me at the, at the line. But that was awesome. I think I had an average heart rate of 140 and a max of 159. So I did that race just to really see how my own endurance training, my low heart rate training, prepared me for a high intensity event like that. And it turns out it prepared me pretty well. I did pretty well in that race. I really enjoyed it. But racing isn't the only reason we're cycling. We are obviously cycling for our health. There is something that that study missed that's important to me, and that is that the, they didn't compare this HIT training to a group that did lower heart rate training, like endurance training. The study was done in 2017. It turns out since then there have been a few studies that focused on that, partially because it wasn't in this study, and it did find that both types of training are very effective at helping us build, maintain our mitochondria, except for in two ways. And there's two things that are, that are different. One is obvious that endurance training does take a lot more time because you're out there for longer. Hit training can be done pretty quickly, but physiologically it, it has a difference in the, in the way it builds the mitochondria cells. So the mitochondria cells be, are built with more networks, more interconnectedness. And those networks help with a bunch of things, but in primarily two big things is one, it helps with type two diabetes because it, it helps us recognize insulin better. And also uh, it is more resistant, it creates cells that are more resistant to stress. So I will be adding it to my training, just like I add, and I'll put a video here I, that I did on this, add strength training to my whole workout regimen because that is important, especially for cyclists. So check that video out. Um, I wanna hear what you think about this. Do you already do it? Do you do something else that we can learn from? Please let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you. I learn as much from those as I hope you do from these videos. Share this video with anybody you care about. Uh, please subscribe. I really enjoyed putting this one together. It was a lot of fun. Got me out there doing a race I probably wouldn't have done uh, otherwise. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.